How's it going, everybody? Rob Brad here today, and we are back with your Calgary Flames. Ready to see if, I mean, we're probably going to make the playoffs. I was going to say, ready to see if we make the playoffs in our title defense season. But looking at that, guys, we are 11 points ahead of the Ducks, who are in the wild card spot. And uh, what is that, 13 points ahead of the Predators? So realistically, we are a playoff team. Now, I want us to be, you know, a President's Trophy winning team, a team at the top of the West. I want to have the one seed, not the, you know, divisional three slot like we're in now so I really think we do need to make an upgrade and you guys agree with me at the end of the last one that we probably need to upgrade the blue line if we're going to upgrade anywhere right the forward core looks really good I mean maybe here and there I mean Peltier is not looking too happy right I mean he absolutely despises me uh but Lakaramaki you know he was one of the guys that we were worried about last year this season he really has um taken that step but then you look at the blue line and it's solid but it's nothing special, and we need to go out and get somebody to take the pressure off of Mason Jackson. Now, I still think he's going to continue to develop and continue to be a great, great player, but I do think we need a top two defenseman. Going out and getting a number one, like a bona fide franchise defenseman, I think we have one of those in Mason Jackson. He's just not there yet. He's 21, right? He's a defender. They, they take a little bit longer. I'll give him a little bit more time, but at the end of the last one, we talked about going after... Um, Eric Carlson, he's now, uh, we, we tried to go after him in the off season. He didn't sign with us. He got a little bit more money, uh, from Montreal. I think one year as well. Montreal isn't doing great. Uh, taking a look at their defensemen. You can see Eric Carlson here is an 89, but he is 37. Uh, he is signed. Yep. Only for this season, right? He is phenomenal. I'd love to get him. There's also David Reinbacher who's just ahead of him, right? Um, he's more of a defensive defenseman right uh he's listed as a two-way defender but those puck skills just scream he's not going to put up points even playing next to eric carlson i guess he does have 26 points in 50 games that's pretty darn good minus 20 obviously montreal's very bad giveaway to takeaway ratio eh, whatever uh and he blocks a good amount of shots so he's only playing 21 where are they playing him if he's only playing 21 a night eric carlson's playing 26 i guess they're I, are they're playing caden Gooley with uh eric carlson uh, okay, uh, is is my guess, unless Caden Gooley's just racking up the special teams minutes. I'm not sure, uh, but <laughs> whatever. I, I don't think Eric Carlson is the guy for us. Um, I'd love, uh, you know, I, he's he's a nice fallback option here, but I was doing some digging, and you guys, you know, were like hoping that I could find a younger defenseman, and I think I have right here, Brant Clark, the number one defenseman from the LA Kings. They have plenty of defensemen on the team, I'm not going to try and justify it from their side because it doesn't make too much sense from their side, but I want him. So I will go get him. Uh, and we will also go ahead and give them Dante Earl. Um, and then I am also going to give them, I, I don't think they want him, but Casper Hellenius. Some of you has asked me, what is the plan with this guy? 77 at 21. He's probably going to be ready next season, but I did say that last year. It concerns me that his development is starting to plateau and he is getting a ton of ice time down in the AHL, but I just, you know, I just don't see it for him really being a long-term contributor. And I feel like we can find some maybe veterans to play on that fourth line um, at some cheap two-way deals. You know, there's always a couple of those guys in free agency. Now, I don't want to rely on free agency and finding those players, but I, I think giving up a guy like Hellenius will be fine. We'll just have to keep an eye on our pipeline to make sure that we have guys that are coming up and continually refreshing the bottom six on this roster because the top six is pretty much locked in place for a long time um it's just the bottom six and then obviously Dante Earl was the guy we were hoping would grow and develop to be a stud for us but 73 at 20 defensive defenseman six foot four I mean he he he, he looks great I just Again, I said this a couple episodes ago when we were making some of those big trades back then that we are getting the best player in this deal. Brant Clark, 88, offensive defenseman, and his stats look insane. Now, I know I'm covering up the physical category, but it's three and a half stars, 90 durability, 88 strength too. His body checking is an 80, right? So he's not going to get pushed around at 6'2", 197. The skating I thought would be better. It's only in the 85s uh, for acceleration, agility, and speed. So not the greatest skating defenseman. But everywhere else and everywhere it counts in the simulation, he is a stud. I mean, we can just start in the shooting category. That shooting category is better than a lot of forwards on the team, let alone the defensemen on the team. 
95 offensive awareness with 94 discipline. Yes, the poise isn't that great, but I don't know how many playoff games he's played with the LA Kings. Then you go move over to the puck skills. You got 91 passing, 89 puck control, 91 deking, hand I-86, so that's not even too bad. I mean, that is elite offensive defenseman uh, ratings. And then you go down to the defensive category. As an offensive defenseman, have 91 defensive awareness, 89 shot blocking, and 91 stick checking. This is an all-around stud who I think when paired with our team that puts up a lot of offense will really just, will, I think we will unlock Brant Clark's point potential, right? He's eating minutes there in LA. He is playing a little bit on the power play, but not much. And I think that's a complete misuse of a, of a tremendous asset from the LA Kings. Uh, the, he's blocked. He blocks a ton of shots. He doesn't really hit. But again, like we said, that physical category, he's not going to get pushed around, but I guess he's not really a hitter. 10, I mean, nine or 18 in a full season is actually kind of crazy. Nine hits in over 2,000 minutes of ice time. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I guess he just runs away from, from other players in the corners. Holy cow. Giveaway to takeaway ratio obviously is not great, but I think with better forwards around him, uh, I, I think this guy is going to be an absolute stud. He's got off the rush as a superstar ability, and he fits the power play lines there. And I think I think he'll be a fine fit in the top four. Even if he doesn't quite fit the scheme perfectly, he should at least be somewhat of a fit. He's playing on their defensive pairing one, their power play as well. Uh, power play one. So that is concerning um, to see that him not put up that many power play points. We'll take a look at LA's power play in a minute here, but, but Brant Clark got another year at sub five, right? So we can figure things out. I absolutely love this deal. I think the LA Kings are going to take this deal too. Let me see if I can get a pick back uh, in the trade as well. Or maybe, I mean, we could go after a guy like uh, Zymer here, Cone Zymer. I mean, that's, I know he's not, he's not, he's terrible defensively. Riley height, um, could be good. I, I'm just going to take a pick. Um, uh, I'm not going to try and get one of those players back. I'll take a fourth round pick as well in this deal. It, listen, it looks pretty even. I don't think it's going to go through because they obviously like Brant Clark and aren't overly thrilled with what we have or what we're giving them, right? I mean, they're good players, but they don't match the needs of the LA Kings, but let's give it a go. Let's give it a try. Trade rejected. If I get rid of the fourth, Trade rejected. Okay, I, I I had a feeling this was going to happen, so I did some pre-scouting. Um, and they do like the, th the third round pick from us. So we'll see if this one goes through. This was the trade I was originally going to propose. Figured I'd give it a try uh, without the third, see if we can keep the pick. But we'll go with this next year's third. And it's going to, they're going to reject it. Okay. Um, we have two thirds this year. I'll give up a second. This year, I feel like a second, you know, it's way better. Uh, Earl, Hellenius, and a second for Brant Clark. Trade rejected. Wow. Okay, so they really want a lot more than than what I'm willing to offer. Our first round pick has no value too. That's that. It feels gross. Uh, and of course, they are. They do want like number one players. Lucas Cormier. Lucas Cormier has got a ton of uh, of value as an offensive defenseman. I feel like this is a fair uh, to shift that back to them, and then maybe just maybe I can get a pick out of the deal. Right. Uh, Lucas Cormier, I believe, is scratched right now. So. We would end up scratching Baron, who we just brought in. Can I get a second? I don't, I'm not going to get the second, but can I get a second? Uh, I, I think this is fine. They're getting a lot of young talent. They're getting younger here. Obviously, Brant Clark uh, is 25, right? So a little bit year, a uh, little bit time left to grow. Um, they got some really good forwards. You know what? Yeah, we'll see. I'm not going to try and justify it. Again, like I said, I want them. It's not too crazy, and it's not cheesy. So uh, we'll go ahead and propose that trade. Rejected. Okay. I figured, can I get maybe, I'm just going to keep working the pick down uh, till something goes through, trade rejected. Okay, fourth maybe. I'm, I'm hoping I, I can get a pick back in this deal. Quite far off. Uh, how about I just go to a fifth? Is this even going to go through? Um, that's a very good question. Maybe a sixth, maybe no pick? Trade rejected. Oh, wow. All right. So a seventh. I'll take a seventh. Uh, we've seen teams give up crazy amounts for a seventh uh, quite far off. And if I do this trade, wow. Okay. So we're going to have to give up even more. I'll give up a next year's third because we have picks next year. Tra what? Okay. This is starting to get a little bit crazy. I mean, I'm just kind of filling up the trade value here. Man, I would love to get Brant Clark, but they clearly don't want to give him up. And if we take a look at the fine trade, um, they were offering things that I was just not okay with giving up that much for a guy like Brant Clark. Um, 
I mean, they want Boakfist with Paterka and Siona. And we know Boakfist and Paterka, they are solid pieces for us. Not going to give him Mason Jackson and Lakaramaki. Not going to give him Kuzmenko. And I really don't want to give him Huberto at 91. An elite offensive option giving up straight up for Brant Clark. So as much as I'd love to, maybe this is something we re revisit in the offseason. Is that Eric Carlson trade that they asked that the Canadians asked for was really, really good. Um, I wonder if the Canadians would be willing to give me David Reinbacher. I doubt it, but uh, yeah, no trades found. There was a couple others. I forgot. Oh, God, who who, who were they? Who did they play for? Um, they were young, right-handed defensemen. I know I'm not necessarily married to lefty and righty, um, but I just kind of wanted to find some younger players. Um, oh, I think it was Philadelphia. Yeah, Jamie Drysdale would be another amazing option for us. And they would want Dmitry Zykov straight up. I don't, I just don't think that makes sense for us right now. Oh, the Toronto Maple Leafs were like trying to get rid of every single, yeah, every single defenseman. They just get rid of them. They don't want them. Uh, 87 overall, uh, Morgan Riley. I mean, he's he's pretty good. I mean, a really good two-way defender. Uh, great puck skills, actually. Would love to see the defensive category be a little bit higher. He does fit the top four. Two more years left at 7.29. But they want Dante Earl a first in Vladar. He, that's a little bit much. And then, obviously, I don't think we're upgrading too much when we get Lilligren. We, well, we'd upgrade Baron. But, uh, you know, is that really what we want to do here? Uh, taking a look at the Vancouver Canucks. They obviously have elite options here. Heronic is potentially a guy that we could go after. Hey, they want Lindholm and Cormier. Look at that. Um, Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Uh, so... From what I was looking at, there's 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 not too many crazy options. Anaheim, uh, they've got Mintyakov, who's an 87. That was kind of below my threshold here, but as a two-way defender, he looks fantastic. He fits all defensive pairings. Um, what would it take to get him? Mason Jackson in two firsts. Oh, my word. Um, but, you know, looking around here, the Buffalo Sabres were on my mind uh, as somebody that we could go after with, with Rasmus Anderson. Owen Power has got that little trade value? Oh my God, he really has not developed much, has he? I mean, I might, I'd say let's go after, uh, let's go after uh, Rasmus Anderson, bring him back. Four more years though, at 8.27. Powers deal is a lot better, and he's younger. Um, he's still got medium elite potential, but he would only fit the third defensive pairing. What would it take to bring Owen Power in? Boakvist, a third and a fourth. Hannafin, a third and a fourth. And Dursey, a third and a fourth. So clearly they want. Um, a defender for a defender. Owen Power can play either side, too. I know some of you have told me to play lefties with lefties, but Owen Power in 87 medium elite, is he? How much of an upgrade is he? Um, you know what I'll do? I think I think for this season, what we should do is talk to Montreal, call about Eric Carlson again. He doesn't have much value. Dante Earl, Carlotti in a seventh. I mean, I, I think I'm going to do this deal, but Owen Power, keep your keep your uh, keep his name in the back of your mind here. Yeah, Carlotti, I, I'll easily part with him. I don't want to give up a seventh. All right, but Dante Earl and Carlotti for Eric Carlson, I think that's an absolute no brainer steal. Um, how much money does he have remaining on his deal? Right, because that that's going to be how much our cap is going to be impacted by. Uh, he's only got 2.8 remaining under on the cap, so 2.8 uh, up. Obviously, we still have. 5 million in cap space so we can make some moves. And by the way, I think like Vegas is selling off everybody. Like all, all the players on Vegas are for sale. Uh, but without a seventh, trade accepted. So we got to keep our seventh round pick. So as you guys saw, I wanted uh, um, Brant Clark. Owen Power snuck his way into the conversation late. Those might be moves we make at the, at the, at the, at the uh, trade, uh, the draft. Good Lord, not the deadline, the draft. Uh, but there we go. We are now all set, and we will uh, edit our AHL lines. We'll edit our NHL lines, too, here. Don't worry. Um, Hellenius gets to stay another day. Um, but honestly, I wonder if I could... Um, wonder if I might be able to find a way to to move him. And maybe, some, maybe a first for Owen Power. I think also getting power would be just disgusting for this team. Um... In the and in the NHL, I think we are going to let Baron continue to play and uh, excuse me, Brizgalov continue to play and bench Baron. So Baron, we're going to bench him for Eric Carlson and move Eric Carlson up here. And okay, so it's a minus two of Hannafin and Dursey. Um, I don't want to move Hannafin down to the bottom pairing. I mean, I don't like the minus two there. Um, Boakfist up here, yeah, that's a zero. Okay, so a plus three between Jackson and Carlson is great. 
Sean Dersey. Um, I think I'll move Boakvis down. He's an 85. He's an offensive defenseman. He's been, I mean, he's been amazing, right? Everybody's been amazing about this bottom pairing. So maybe, I mean, we got a solid middle pairing here. I don't want to move Hannafin down. Uh, Brizgalov would actually get us a, a plus, but uh, righty, righty, lefty, lefty. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, we got lefty, righty, righty, lefty, and lefty, righty. So these guys can all play right or lefty, too. Um, some of these guys can't actually. But there we go. Uh, let's make sure the power play is all set up to Mason Jackson. I, I love you, buddy. But uh, but yeah, you. I'm putting Eric Carlson on the first line power play. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that that's what's going to happen. And then we've got uh, Mason Jackson in this really solid second power play. So uh, I do want to give him four. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, Bokefist for Briz Why is Brisgolov on the? Okay. Briz uh, nope. <laughs> Well, I don't know why Brisgala, I, I never checked the four power play just because like I, I, it never happens. Why is Tage Thompson here? I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, L Lindholm up. Um, oh my God, look at all the X factors, dude. It's l ridiculous. So Lakaramaki, uh, flip you with Thompson, Lakaramaki for Zykov. So it's Zykov, Lindholm, Carlson, Thompson. And on the second power play, we have Huberto, Kuzmenko, Bokvist, and Lakaramaki is actually getting us a plus three because he fits the scheme so well. Wow. Okay. I will, I'll take that. I'm actually not going to mess with that. Lakaramaki, when we go on the four power play, the five minutes a year we do, you are more than welcome to be there. Uh, but let me go ahead and uh, set up the extra lines here. Mason Jackson with Bokvist. Um, where is Jackson Bokvist, Jersey Hannafin? Uh, Carlson, Brizgalov. Uh, let's go ahead and just put Bokvist there. Yeah, fine. I think that, I think that works. And then three on three, we probably want Carlson. Uh, so it's Kuzmenko with Thompson right now, not Bokvist, but, uh, Sean Dersey. I think Sean Dersey will probably be the guy that drops for Eric Carlson here. Uh, Kuzmenko will flip-flop him with, uh, Zykov. Um, so then we go to the third three on three. We got Kuzmenko with Huberto. Uh, Kuzmenko for Lindholm. We got Lindholm and Huberto with Bokefist. And then the third pairing is Mangiapane with Kuzmenko um, and then Mason Jackson. So let's go ahead, actually. Do I, Mangiapane, do we have anybody that can take face-offs? Are we missing out on somebody that can take face-offs here? Um, I guess Thompson, Zykov, Lindholm are our face-off takers. But um, Kuzmenko, I guess Zari would be the guy to step in over Mangiapane at 87. Uh, I think I think I'm fine with it. It's three on three. Extra attackers, Thompson and Lindholm, perfect. And then the shootout will be the shootout, right? So, all right, with 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 uh, I think 30-ish games to go, 32 games. I all of a sudden our cap is way too high. Um, it still says we have 4.9, but I, I, that's weird. Um, hopefully we don't have another error like that again. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Through 50 games, we acquire Eric Carlson, and now this team I think is the, the decor looks. So so much better. And I'm giving Brisgalov the chance, right? I'm giving him a chance now to see if he can improve from the minus one that he's at over these next over the next month, right? I'll give him the next month. If he doesn't improve, Baron or Cormier can absolutely step in for him uh, to play there with Bokvist. It'll probably be Baron because Cormier would be offensive defenseman with an offensive defenseman. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how the team performs now with Eric Carlson. Uh, Connor Zari wants to complain about his ice time. I have a convincing chance of persuading him. He doesn't think 13 minutes is enough, but he is a team player. I really like the line he's playing. I really, I mean, like, listen, for these guys, I, I feel like they're just going to have to, is Connor Zari's like, oh yeah, by the way, I forgot. Um, I also am upset about how I'm playing. Uh, maybe you're right, but I'm not certain I can snap out of this. So, I mean, he needs to figure it out. He does. I think the third line is fine. And I think having, uh, you know, more talent defensively um, is going to be a good thing. But man, that loss against Vancouver hurts a ton. The loss against the Kings is not good either. The Ducks, we lose to them. Wow, we are losing a ton of games uh, recently. Uh, keep current ticket prices. And that's fine. The season ticket price. Okay, so wow. This that that into, that's, uh, acquisition of Eric Carlson does not seem to have spurred this team on to any level of success. Um, let's take a quick look here. Eric Carlson's a minus six. Is that how how is he doing here? He's now an eighty eight. Uh, he's got seven points, but he's a minus one. Hate that. I really do. Uh, Bokvist, Hannafin, Brizgalov's a minus three. Baron was a minus six. I guess maybe we bring in Cormier. Bokvist. Oh man. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, I thought the Eric Carlson, I mean, it's early. It's 10 It's ten games, but he's got seven points and is a minus one, right? I, I didn't expect him to be a great defensive option, 
But I expected a little bit better than this, not going to lie. Um, I mean, his defensive category is also not the best. Uh, we don't really have good defensive defensemen. I think Brizgalov, it, it is time for him to seed way for Baron. I think Baron playing with Boakvist could be pretty good. Um, actually, you know what? Let's move Boakvist up, Hannafin down to play with Baron. Flip-flop them onto the right sides. We've got a righty with a righty, but Dursey can play on his off wing, and then Jackson with Carlson. I'm going to make those couple changes. Um, Pelche is now down to a 77 just because of his ice time. Um, do we have any, we, we don't, I don't think we have any scratch forwards. We do. We got Pospisil, who's a two-way forward. I mean, is he better defensively? Maybe. Um, like, uh, Jacob Peltier, I probably want to give him, like, what, penalty kill time? Uh, Mangiapane, Huberto, Zykov. I think what I'll do is I will be bench Mangiapane for Peltier and hopefully give Peltier a little bit more ice time to get him a little happier. He does fit the penalty kill as well, so... We'll see there, but we are now at the deadline, and like I mentioned, Vegas was one of those teams willing to sell off some assets. So if we take a look at browse, uh, we browse the trading block here. I think it was Vegas anyway. I, I mean, the Ducks want to sell off too, right? I'd love to get myself a Troy Terry or a Tyler Bertuzzi, but I mean, Tyler Bertuzzi's three years at, uh, he is thirty three. So Vegas though was Mark Stone, White Cloud, Duchesne, Sod, March. So these guys all have one year left. It is the perfect opportunity to go out and get a guy like Brandon Saad here. I mean, two-way defender, third liner, his defensive category is not great. Do we have any, like, strong defenders? Mark Stone. Mark Stone would be fantastic. I just don't know if we have the assets to get him. Uh, Jonathan Marchessault is a playmaker with a pretty good defensive category, not going to lie. Um, Brandon Saad's is a little worse, I'd say. Mark Stone obviously is great. So, I mean, that's just one option. But coming into the deadline here, might want to go out and get a better fourth line... Uh, fourth line <laughs> not an entire one but uh, maybe somebody to replace Siona or to bench Peltier and and all that so I mean really the team is is not we're not flying high to be fair we're still the third best team in the west and the third best team in the pacific which sucks um but 77 points I okay I I, I think my perception is skewed just I mean we're 37 20 and 3 good lord um I think my perception is skewed though just because of I mean, we're the seventh best team in the NHL um, in the entire league, right? Top 10. And we, we, we know that Tampa Bay scoring 4.11 goals for per game. Holy moly. Um, but you can see our offense isn't quite high flying a, a, as it maybe once was. But our defense, our defense hasn't, it's, it's been fine. Uh, the penalty kill has slowed down. Wow. Interesting um, to see that our power play has been that poor penalty kill. We never had a great penalty kill, but it's really cooled off. I mean, 82%, I think, is fine, too. So I'm I'm, I'm not worried, but I'm also not feeling confident. So it's not a deadline where I want to just sit on my hands. I think I, think I do want to be a conservative buyer, though. Um, I definitely think buying at the deadline is right for us. And there's Gabe Velarde on a really cheap deal. There's Thatcher Demko. If we wanted to go out and switch goaltenders, it would cost us, well, it looks like a lot. Um... Would really cost us a lot. Holy cow. Um, but that that is a move we could do. Huberto, I don't want to get rid of Huberto. I mean, I know he's aging, but we could get Jake Ottinger, Delandria in a third, or Jordan Cairo straight up. Jordan Cairo straight up? How good is Jordan Cairo? Um, he's an 82. Oh, but he's listed as a first line forward. He must be miserable. His morale has to be absolutely in the gutter right now. Um, what kind of player is he? Uh, he doesn't put up many points. Is that because of the ice time? No, he's gotten 20 minutes a night every year. If way to takeaway ratio is really good. Are these stats real or are they just, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to do that deal, but the Jake Ottinger deal was interesting to me. Um, and then we could maybe flip Spencer Knight for something else. Um, let's take a look at Dallas. I want to take a look at Jake Ottinger. He is an 83, but he's still listed as exact elite, uh, with six years left. Uh, the Leafs have traded Lilligren. I mean, he's still elite. He's still fantastic. Um, and he's got a ton of X factors. I mean, that's barely an upgrade as far as... Uh, oh, this is interesting to see all of these guys be so upset. I wonder if it's because the teams are bad and they want out. Uh, Mark Stone, though, no trades found. I kind of figured that was going to happen. Let's take a look at all the available players. Not just the top 10. Uh, Philippe Deneau is an X factor, but 7.7 .7 is probably too much for what we can... Uh, what we can stomach in a trade. Matt Duchesne has X-Factors, but he's got a 7 million... Oh, my God. 
Uh, it's going so slow. Victor Arvidsson going to the Sabres for Matias Samuelson in a third. Interesting. Um, Brandon Saad here was a guy I had my eye on. No trades found there either. We are kind of running out of assets and cap space. Uh, Kelly Yarncrook, Robbie Fabry, Jonathan Marchiso is listed as bottom six. Yeah. Uh, Jake Ottinger, what would it take to get Jake Ottinger in? Uh, Paterka Ruzishka, Zari Baron in a second, Dursey in a second, or Mangiapane and Baron. I, I, these are just trades I don't want to make. Um, interesting. Okay, you know what I might want to do? I might want to say, uh, oh, Ovi? We can go after Ovi. Oh, my God. Of course, okay, so it brought me back to the beginning. Uh, Amadio, a fourth and a fourth to the Rangers for Landry and a fifth. Blockbuster. Um, let's see here. I want to see what I could get for Hellenius. Rookie skaters. Casper Hellenius. What would teams give me for him? A third and Heinen. A third and Heinen is actually not a bad idea. We can get a fourth line, two thirds, a third and a fourth, a third and a fourth. I, I would a second and a third. I might take a next year second and a third. Um, Tyson Forrester and a third next year. That's actually pretty interesting. Uh, Vander Kane, no thanks. Ho Hofer, no. Uh, DeMello and Dewar, a third and Boone Jenner. Yeah, no, I don't. Zach Whitecloud, that's actually, they wanted to get rid of Zach Whitecloud, so that could be interesting. Um, if I could get like Zach Whitecloud in a pick, um, we kind of have a lot of average defensemen already, though. Zach Whitecloud coming in at an 82, he's listed as a top four. I'm sure he's just unhappy. Um, but at the same time, I, I think that the, I mean, a second and a third for Casper Hellenius is at, at this stage in his career, I think is too good to pass up. If I could flip flop it and make it a second this year and then, a, okay, I mean, there's also the, the, the guy like Danton Heinen in a third. It's a next year's third. Sure. But, uh, Danton Heinen would be a, a fourth liner for us. We'd scratch Peltier, right? Danton Heinen, um, is 81 listed as a depth forward, a decent two eight forward. Doesn't fit the scheme. I think it was the New York Rangers offering a second and third. So let's call the New York Rangers. They want him back. Oh, my God. They want him back. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was a Ranger, right? Yeah, drafted by the New York Rangers. So they want him back. They're willing to do whatever it takes to get him. Uh, I'll take your first. How's that sound? No? Um, not going to happen. Got it. Okay. How about a second this year and then a third next year? Um, is that How's that sound to you? Trade rejected. Okay, so they want a third this year to give to us and then a second next year. Uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with this. Absolutely. Trade accepted. I mean, listen, Hellenius, I just don't think he was going to ever go anywhere uh, on this roster. And this is kind of one of those things you got to just kind of refresh. Um, a guy like Ferguson. Uh, Ferguson here. What would I get for Fer no, nothing? What about him and Fallon? No trades found there. Okay, what about him and Mercier? Uh, nothing found there, really. Um, okay, so a trade from the Toronto Maple Leafs. They want to give us Duar and Patera a third. So it's basically Duar and Patera for a second. No thanks. Not going to do that deal. Um, let's go ahead. I, I kind of want to look at some of the, you know, I don't want to call them bad players, but fourth liners. Let's find a bottom sixer that we can get on the cheap. Uh, bottom six forward. I mean, Isaac Lundstrom. Uh, he could be an option at 82 overall. It would take a second round pick next year. Uh, miss me with that for an 82, a second round pick. Good Lord. I guess picks have no value. Um, Jordan Cairo. What would it take to get him? We saw Huberto straight up. Bokvist, Licker, Maki, and Baron. Paterka up first and Ruzishka. I mean, Ruzishka, Hannafin in second. Oh, Huberto. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I want to do that. I like Huberto. Like he, he's been around this whole time. I'd feel really rude to trade him away now. Um, as funny as that sounds, uh, Ruzishka, he does have some value, but I guess we could, I mean, we could probably get a second for him, right? Um, apparently, according to the value, um, we could, somebody out there is probably going to give us a second or something. Um, Capo Kakinen, all right, Robbie Fabry, I guess, I guess maybe not. Uh, one thing I do want to check, I'm going to check back in on Brant Clark and Owen Power. Let's start with Owen Power. He should be like right here. Oh, Casey Middlestat. Look at that. Aw, uh, sad. Um, it would take Dursey. Dursey and two thirds for Owen Power. I mean, that is an increase of 1.6 million on the cap. But, I mean, Dursey's pretty good, isn't he? Dursey's been really good. It could mess with the locker room chemistry. 85, two-way defender. Pair him with power. I mean, power is slightly better defensively. Power is better defensively. He's got the same puck skills. They both have the same uh, senses. The skating is the same. The physical is slightly in Owen Power's favor, and he's got a slightly better shot, obviously. Um, and he is 25. 
Uh, and it would take two thirds. We have extra thirds. I think this is an upgrade to the blue line. Another medium elite player. He is 25, right? But it's an 87 from a 85. Owen oh, Power uh, fits the third defensive pairing. Hey, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it, actually. I'm going to wait. I'm going to take a look at Brant Clark. I'm going to take a look at Brant Clark, but I do like that trade with the Buffalo Sabres there. LA Kings, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about Brant Clark, shall we? No trades found. How about how about your how about your other young stud here in, in Generous? Not feeling generous? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, Sabres. Uh, you have yourselves a deal. I mean, that's a it's an easy upgrade. That's an easy... Wow, Zach Benson is a stud, dude. Ooh, wow. Holy smokes. Um, no trades found. I figured. But I think Owen Power coming in, I mean, give, just gives us more flexibility. Um, Sean Dursey in two-thirds. I think, you know what? Maybe if I can work down that third this year to, like... A fourth next year because uh, we do have a I mean we have three thirds this year can I throw in a, a fifth instead Jersey a third and a fifth for power trade accepted all right so I worked him down from the third and we have Owen power now um, look at that lots of elite defensemen uh, we've got Mason Jackson we've got no Owen power oh let's let's see what we might be able to get for Lucas corn I should have thrown him in the Owen power deal um, Lucas Cormier, we're actually getting a top a couple top a uh, top six prospects from the Sabres, a second and a third, a first round pick from the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, next year's first. Okay, I feel like a first round pick from the Oilers and the Panthers. Hurricanes, Oilers, Panthers, and Lightning. Hurricanes, Oilers, Panthers, Lightning. A Hurricane, Panthers, Oilers, Lightning. Where are they in the standings? Uh, Stat Central. We're getting the first four. Uh, Hurricanes, Panthers, Oilers, Lightning. Um, entire league. There's the Oilers, Hurricanes, Lightning, and Panthers. So the Panthers do have the, uh, the best, the best first round pick. That is crazy. But I mean, still, I mean, I don't think they're going to miss the playoffs, but I will take the Panthers deal. Absolutely. Because it's going to be the best first as of right now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to move on from Lucas Cormier. I, I, it's, it's done, done deal. Lucas Cormier out, out, out the door, right? Five years older and he's only a 77. Now he's a little upset due to his ice time, but, um, I'm fine with this. A first round pick from, from some of these teams. I mean, you could call Buffalo with one of these top six in Dennis, but again, I don't think some of these guys with their, you know, they're probably not players that I want. Right, 68 at 18, medium top six playmaker. Again, I think I'd rather have the uh, Florida Panthers. Just see if I, what, I, what, what, what value can I squeeze out of the Florida Panthers here uh, for him? A first, um, and then, I mean, I could go after like a next year's first instead. What about a first and a second this year for Cormier? Trade rejected. Sweeten it just a touch. Boom! A first and a second this year? Are you serious? All right. Um, I wonder what, oh, Jacob Peltier is pretty upset too. And uh, now I'm just kind of like, just going to scrap everybody, uh, who's unhappy. We, we will have no unhappy players on this roster, please. Um, Peltier, we could get Blancfist, Fast, Danton Heinen straight up. That's, that's an upgrade. Uh, yes, he expires, but he is cheaper. A fifth in Thomas Tatar, a fourth. Uh, we're getting some decent players here. Not nobody too, uh, Morgan Geeky. Uh, if we wanted to like kind of, oh my God, I thought there was Alexi Lafreniere. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, we can get him back. Um, I, I don't think he's going to go straight up for Peltier, but you never know. Uh, McLeod is another option. I don't know. Uh, has he really played bad enough for me to say, let's move on from him, even though he's upset? I don't know about that. Um, I think it's just, I've, I've got that itch now that I've made a couple trades. I think it'd be interesting to keep making trades, but I, I did I, I up Danton Heinen, but Keel Thomas is another one, but I probably don't think he's got a good defensive category. I don't think they've given him a good one, and he probably hasn't developed it. Uh, let's take a look at Geeky here from the Dallas Stars. Um, we've got Morgan Geeky, 80 overall, two-way forward. I mean, compare the two of them, and it's really the same type of player, but Peltier's got a better shot. Uh, Morgan Geeky is more physical, but he hasn't played a single minute uh, in, a, in, in a while, so uh, he's been really a, a fourth-line forward. Um... Uh, and he's probably not going to complain about the ice time, which is nice, right? That's what he expects. But I'm going to keep Peltier. We may move on from him in the off season, but I think he should get a boost after we do end up making the playoffs. Um, as far as other players to move on from, I mean, West at 75 at 18 and McCarron at 20 at 77 means some of those guys that we traded on the blue line are expendable. 
Uh, Brizgalov and, and Baron, they're fine. I mean, we tried to look for Fallon. Um, nothing there. What about Fallon and like one of our thirds? No trades Fallon. What about Fallon and a second? Uh, no trades Fallon and the Florida Panthers first. No trades Fallon. Really? Does really? Nobody wants him? I find that shocking, but we can always try and move on from him at the draft. I'm not too concerned about it. Let's take a look at the prospects available at the deadline here. Um, I'm still not sold on Spencer Knight, to be fair. I am not, like, married to him as the goaltender right now. Uh, we'll have to see how he plays down the stretch, but it's just been so under... Well, EA, for the love of God, fix that. Because that is the most annoying thing because they did not give you... It's a terrible way to scroll. You can't sort. You can't actually look at available players anywhere where you can sort or filter or anything like that. And then you go th do this and all of a sudden some random AI makes a, a, a trade that you don't even care about. That has no impact on you. The Sabres could flip a 7th for a 6th from Ottawa. And all of a sudden I, I can no longer look at the guys I want to look at. So it's just, it's just ridiculous. And you know, like I said, there's no way to sort to get back to whatever I wanted, um, you know, very quickly. And, and it's just, oh, it's, it's, bleh, it's horrible. Uh, medium elite Simon Nemec at 80. He's got to be upset, right? For Spencer Knight. You've got to be joking, right? I mean, I guess, I guess his, oh, his value is higher than it said it was. I mean, that's not that high value, but like Spencer Knight. How high is his value? Um, I mean, it, it is a similar trade. I'm very excited, about, by the way, for Jerry Corso in the future. 75 at 21. He is developing nicely. Um, and I think he could be the goaltender uh, to replace Spencer Knight. But I don't think we're going to make any more trades. I think that is the deadline. We're going to move on. And we're going to mess up, mess around with the lines. Um, Anaheim trades two firsts. Two firsts for Bertuzzi? Holy moly. Onger goes to Columbus for two firsts. Wow, that is wild. Simon Nemec, a third and a fifth. Go for Demko and... Wow, okay, so they really wanted a number one goaltender and they probably had that call in their back pocket. Wanted me to give up Spencer Knight. I think he was a little bit younger than Thatcher Demko. Um, similar cap hit, but man, what what blockbusters. And, and Buffalo is placing Sam Steele on waivers, who's a 78 overall depth forward, who we will decline to claim off waivers. All right. Now it's time to take a look at the lines um, as it stands right now. Did our lines get messed up? A little bit. They got messed up a little bit. Yeah. Mangiapane is a plus seven. I mean, the third line is doing fine. Paterka as a minus. Um, Huberto's... Ah, that... Interesting. Okay, so that second line is no longer killing it. Lindholm on the first line. Now, if we put Paterka on the second line with Zykov and... I don't want Zykov on the second line, though. He's got 68 points in 60 games. I would rather have a guy like, um, well, I guess I don't really get a choice here. Uh, we'll do that. Okay, yeah, that's that's what we want. And Thompson plays right wing. Lindholm plays center. Yeah, so there there we go. There it is. There are the lines. Oh, that's so close to being a perfect, um, a, a, just a perfect chemistry fit. Um, almost two plus fives there. Really wish we could get it. Ruzishka will center the, I think he'll center the, yeah, he'll center the fourth line. Peltier, Pospisil, yeah, and then Oleg Briskolov is scratched. Power and Boakvist, not the best tandem. Mason Jackson is not going to play there. And then Baron and Hannafin get a plus one. So Jackson and Boakvist we know is a good pairing. Power and Carlson, um, power doesn't fit there. Wow, okay, so we do get the plus three still. Um, you know, why don't, we, why don't we leave that there? Power, like, we knew he wasn't going to be much of a scheme fit. If he does develop any X factors or grows, I think the eight million is going to be easily... Uh, easily justified, and I do think that this is a much, much better uh, defensive pairing, or defensive core right now. Now now we have an 87 and 88 with an 86 and 85, and then an 85-81. I mean, that's kind of nutty. Uh, and then you go to the goaltenders, Spencer Knight and Vladar. Uh, let me, I, I will set up the, uh, the power play and the penalty kill, so give me one second here. I mean, that's fine to me. Uh, actually, I'd like Zykov to be on the first line power play over Huberto. Huberto is aging, and yeah, we'll see. Um, but he can still uh, he'll play center, and I think I'm fine with this. I think, uh, yeah, Carlson and then Boakvist. Um, so yeah, actually, that's not too bad. Then penalty kill-wise, we got Paterka with Zari, which is a plus three. Lindholm with Thompson is a plus one. And then Huberto with Zykov. I feel like I don't need Zykov to play penalty kill minutes. I mean, he's I know he's a good defender, but uh, Huberto can take some face-offs there. And then Zykov, we will uh, move on from him here, and I will put, I think, Peltier. He does fit. Peltier fits. Um, so... 
We will play him there. Um, yeah, and he's a good fit. So there's the penalty kill. There's the power play. Let's hope that things go better down the stretch than they did during the middle of the season. Um, and we can really make a push to, to, to push the Oilers and the Canucks, right? Three games in hand, win all three of those. We had 83 points. We'd be four points behind the Oilers and eight behind the Canucks. But we do play them plenty. So hopefully the addition of Owen Power playing next to Eric Carlson with Mason Jackson and Boakvist now on the second pairing with Hannafin and then Barron. I, I think it'd be, I think it's going to be look really, really good. So let's get up to this game against Vancouver. Uh, enough time to see how the team is performing. All right. Three points, five points, uh, seven points there. The Islanders have now fired their head coach. Uh, the scouts have released their updated scouting Minnesota. We beat them as well. These are some tight wins. There's a, there's a cup multi-goal win. We lost 11 to five. Ouch. We win six, two, six, three, five, four. All right, 103 and 105 points, and we're only at 70 games played. My God, how are how is Florida doing? Florida, 95. They are behind the. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, they're behind everybody. They're, I mean, 95 points. I mean, we're like the same. But now we have two first round picks. We can pl easily move around. Um, this is a big one, though. This is a two point swing. Obviously, two games in hand on the Canucks. Four points. We'd be seven points back. This could make us five points back if we, you know, everything worked out perfectly for us. Um, at 94 points, though, I mean, we are we are right up there with some of the best teams in the league, but just not quite there. Uh, one thing I do want to check, though, I mean, the, I mean, the simulation has been going well right? uh, since the since the trade deadline. I just wanted to see. Uh, really, it's the blue liners that we went out and acquired. Eric Carlson's now a minus three, which means I think he's a plus. 17 points in 20 games and a plus two. Great to see that. And then Owen Power. Uh, minus six is a plus two playing on that top pairing with three points. Um, then we've got Boakfist and Jackson. They're killing it. Thir plus 35, plus 28, 26 points, 29 points there. Uh, Hannafin, Briz oh, Baron's a minus 15. Baron is, oof, that, that's that's rough, dude. Minus 15. It may be time to put Oleg Brizgala back in the lineup. Um, maybe, maybe not. I mean, things are working, but he's not doing so hot there on the third uh, oh, look at that. We we do have uh, Mangiapane here on the second pair. Uh, yeah, on the th second line. Paterka being a minus six. I feel like moving him down is just the right call. Um, you know, we had a good amount. I mean, we, we are getting a plus one between these two guys. Uh, I'm going to put in Oleg Brezgalov. I'm putting Oleg Brezgalov in. Um, just going to do it. Call me crazy, but I want Oleg Brezgalov playing some minutes. I don't want him sitting on the bench. Um, so down the stretch here, last 12 games. Let's see what you got. 12 games with Oleg Brizgalov in. Um, after getting smoked by, uh, other than getting smoked by um, the Winnipeg Jets, we've had a really good run post-deadline. So um, we got Vancouver here, and we have Vancouver here. So we'll go from Vancouver to Vancouver. All right, this game against Vancouver is a big 5-1 win. Huge. We do lose to Nashville. We lose to Chicago. We lose to, oh my God, there's, there's, there's a bunch of losses in a row. We do shut out. Okay. We do shut out the uh, Philadelphia Flyers against Colorado, who's the best team in the Central. We win in a shootout. We lose to the Predators. 101 points, guys. We are we are right there. We are a great team. 101 points. My word. I mean, the Lightning and the Hur oh my God, the Hurricanes at 114. It's just one of those we're chasing some really freaking good teams uh, right now. I do want to see, though, um, Hannafin was a minus or is a plus 12. I want to see, did he get any better? Um, I obviously I hate plus minus as, as a, as a stat to determine if a player is playing well or not, uh, minus five for Oleg Brizgalov. I don't know if that's better or worse than what he was at. Uh, Owen powers, a minus 10. Is he, Ooh, he's a minus two now playing with Eric Carlson, who is back to even 22 points in 26 games. Mason Jackson with 20 plus 20 cheapers, uh, plus three there. If we move Hannafin, I mean, we could do this. I just feel like Boakvist's plus 35 is kind of ridiculous mason jackson with owen power on the middle pairing power can play right d uh, yeah why well, I, I mean i might as well give this a try why not um owen power just oh yikes um nothing not, not really yikes but uh i i don't really know. i don't have i don't much to say about that um he he just is he's doing fine uh we do have two big games right we got a game in hand on the oilers and uh, we beat the canucks here and we pull within Three points, three points in three games is a lot to make up for sure. Uh, or we pulled within four points. Good, do, do your math right, Ryan. Uh, we'd have 103. We'd pull within four, and we need four points in three games. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but hey, let's just let's just see. 
We do beat them in regulation, and we, okay, we're four point. Oh my goodness, this we play the Edmonton Oilers on the final day against the LA Kings. Now, uh, we got to keep this rolling against the LA Kings. We do win in overtime, um, and the Oilers won though. That is a a, a bummer. Uh, Oilers won both games they played in that stretch, uh, and the Canucks only won one, so we still have a chance. We'd be two points behind the Canucks if we beat Seattle here. All right. Against Seattle, we win. Okay, we are now two points behind the Canucks. This is a battle. I mean, if we beat Edmonton, we're at 109. Two points behind. Oh, my God. Two points behind them. And then we would be level with the Canucks. Would we Would we have the tiebreaker over the Canucks if we beat uh, Edmonton? That's really what I want to figure out here. Um, let's take a look. Team says 51 wins. We're going to come in third in the division. That is disgusting. Uh, we would not have the tiebreaker over the Canucks. So I don't think whatever. I think whatever happens here... We are the three seed. I think we are locked into being the three seed. Um, and it's a bit of a bummer because we're so good. But uh, against Vancouver, you know, I think that team, I think that's a team that we we match up fine against. Uh, we'll just see how the sim goes. But here we go. Last game of the season against Edmonton. We do lose four to two. Edmonton stakes their claim. The Canucks also lost. So something interesting may have happened. Had we beaten the Oilers, the Canucks may, I mean, May have taken the, the division. We would have played the Oilers again. But 90 points for Dmitry Zykov, 49 goals as well. 107 points for us is good enough for the fourth best in the NHL. Third best in our division. Feels bad. Um, but no, a very, very good season overall. 3.57 goals, four per game. Not bad at all. Uh, solid 3.0. Man, the, the freaking Oilers just are going nuts right now. McDavid must be really upset um, with, with their performance. Because, yeah, look. Oh, my God. we Whoa, we, they we're the sixth best team in the league? Okay, I guess I miscounted. But we should have the tiebreaker. Absolutely should have the tiebreaker over the Florida Panthers. We have more regular. Oh, they have more regulation wins. Um, That's what it is. We are tied on regulation and overtime wins. But we have more straight up wins. It should be straight up wins first, right? Like, just because they're overtime merchants doesn't mean that they, they don't deserve to be ahead of us. Ah, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, but we'll take a look at the goals four per game. Our 3.57 is, is, is pretty darn good. Our solid 3.0 against is, you know, in the top half of the league, top 10, I'd say. Uh, power play percentage at 25.6 did climb to fourth. So the power play percentage did, did get better. And so did the penalty kill percentage. They are both top 10. I mean, I mean, we're a well-rounded team. It's going to be another interesting playoff run. The problem this time is we have a lot of competition against us. Huberto, wow, with a minus four. Interesting. So we'll stick with the forwards. Dmitry Zykov with 90, Kuzmenko with 81. Tage Thompson with only 79, but he was a plus 22. So a bit of a down year for Tage, but listen, I get it. Um, it's going to happen. He shot a little bit worse, and he just didn't get the assists that he did last year. I think uh, Kuzmenko not scoring as much, maybe. Um, 26 goals for Kuzmenko. I mean, he's listen, he's a 25-goal scorer through and through. Dmitry Zykov, though, um, a career high in goals for him. I'm not sure what happened with Tage. I think he just scored less, <laughs> straight up. Um, it's as simple as that. He took... Uh, 11 fewer shots and scored five fewer goals. That's crazy. Uh, he just didn't get the assists either, interestingly enough. Uh, Lindholm, though, uh, with Huberto and Mangiapane, that's, uh, Huberto being a minus four is a bit concerning. Paterka's a minus eight. You know, I love Paterka. I love Paterka, and, he, and he's great, and he's well-rounded, and he's growing, but he just, I mean, even on good teams, he seems to struggle to be a plus player. Every year he's been here, he's a minus player, so you just wonder... Is he the kind of guy we cash in on? Two years left at 4.25 in his mid-20s. I mean, he's a, he's a good player. But it seems like every line we stick him on, he's a minus eight. And we could maybe, yeah, I don't know, we could use him plus one of our first to go after somebody really crazy. Um, maybe a blue liner who's really cra crazy, right? There's not many of those out there. I do. I am noticing that I'm like, unless you have Cal McCarr or Adam Fox, it's tough out there. Uh, but Connor Zari with... Uh, now Paterka and Lekaramaki. Lekaramaki, much, much better second season. Now up to an 83 overall. That is big to see him grow from an 81 to an 82, now to an 83. Obviously his best season um, in the NHL. Last season, 21 points. We did bench him at the deadline. He was a minus 19. This season, 20 goals, 43 points, plus player, 10% shooting percentage still, getting some power play time, some power play points. You know, not a very high event player giveaway takeaway, but I, I'm i fine with that. I'm not going to complain about that whatsoever. Uh, and then the fourth line seemed to be fine. Peltier plus three. He's now down to a 76. Dude, I'm trying. I am really trying to give you some ice time, man. He's upset because of his individual performance, too. 
tough. All right, defenseman, though. Eric Carlson with 63 points in 82 games, down to an 87. Um, let's take a look. He was a plus one. He did finish the season as a plus one. 25 points in 32 games played. That's 60-point pace, right? So he kept it going. Boakvist with 30 points in 38 is crazy. Mason Jackson with 24. Owen Power. Still a minus player, man. Those Buffalo players. I mean, he was a plus last season, so we'll see. We'll hopefully see him develop in the offseason. Um, 23 minutes a night, so he's getting the ice time here. Um, Mason Jackson, plus 24, 27 points. I'd like to see a little bit more growth out of him. I don't want to see him hit that 86 in plateau. Uh, Noah Hannafin looked good. Brisgolov with a minus 7, not great, but 15 points as a defenseman. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that he can see some growth as a low elite. Um, and then, obviously, Barron... Baron did not look good. He was not the Nick Jensen uh, that we had hoped. So maybe next year we we look to somebody else. But he, he he's a fine seventh defenseman. I'm not going to complain there. Spencer Knight had a good season. I'll take it. 905, 286. When we put as many goals in as we do, I think he, he, he's best when the lights shine the brightest too. Uh, Vladar, actually, this is the first rough season we've seen out of Vladar as our backup. I mean, he has been an absolute... I mean, I guess the first season, but we... Yeah. Weren't exactly a very good first season, but every other season besides this one, he has been a rock solid backup. So tough to see him do that, but we don't have to worry about our goaltenders, uh, our backup goaltender anymore, because we are now entering the playoffs where it is Spencer Knight or bust. Uh, but as far as around the league, uh, Mika Zibanejad, that's a name that I haven't seen up there in a minute. Uh, but Kucherov, Matthews, Zibanejad, Nylander, Svechnikov, I guess you just have to be a blue team uh, to be at the top here. Alex Ovechkin with 107 points is an 80 over. Are you kidding me? He's still 107 points, 54 goals. Where is he playing? He's playing 20 minutes a night, so he's on the first line. I mean, that is just, he's a cheat code, guys. Absolute cheat code. Jesper Brat, hello. Um, welcome. 94 overall, Jesper Brat. I mean, I know he's good. I just didn't realize he was that good. Um, none of our guys going to be up here near the top. As far as goal scorers, though, the Rocket Richard goes to Matthews by a mile. Seven goals more than Kucherov. Um, a lot of 50 goal scorers. Bedard still kicking in uh, kicking in uh wow 95 at 22 good lord he is filthy uh let's take a look at the defenseman though uh i had him fox. like this is what i mean right if you don't have fox hughes mccarr like if you don't have one of those guys you're not you're not developing anybody korchinski i think is just getting the benefit of play, being an offensive defenseman playing with uh uh, Connor Bernard, uh, obviously Eric Carlson being up there is nice to see for us. I'm hoping he turns it on in the playoffs where he's got the 96 points. I mean, his stats are still still ridiculous. Um, it, it, it's wild. Uh, and then take a look at the gold leagues. I think it might be, uh, oh, interesting. Uh, Laurent Brassois, I believe, will be the uh, Vezina Trophy winner. Um, 916, Elvis Merzlikens. I mean, they didn't play much. 48 and 49. The best goal against average was uh, Lucas Dostal. Okay, so we got a bit of a debate. You guys can have your debate. Take your pick on who you think should win the Vesna. And the best rookie of the year is Roger McQueen. Oh, my God. I love that name. The fact that this is his rookie season is kind of disgusting. He played in the uh, WHL all three years, played in the AHL one year, and now has arrived at the age of 21 as a great playmaker. Gavin McKenna, um, Michael... Branzeg Nygaard, uh, 83, medium top six, was taken in 2024 by the Leafs. Probably, I mean, he's playing on the third line. So Michael Miza, um, Adam Benak. Okay, so there's your players. How about how about goalies? No, no rookie, no rookie goalies making their debut this year. But all in all, guys, we care not about rookie skaters. We care about our path to the cup. And it starts in Vancouver. We have to travel um to Vancouver for this one. So this should be a fun rivalry series to go off of but guys that's all the time i have for this one make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see some more and i will see you guys in the next one this is free for all free for all what we fall this is free for all